your host, Marcy. You're watching the Nerd Network Podcast, episode two. Welcome. Um, I'll have everyone introduce themselves one more time. Blake Bitten, hit me up, uh, Bitten Blake on IG. Go ahead, Julian. IG's out there. Uh, Go ahead. I'm, I'm Julian Jenkins. You can find me at the real Julian on Instagram. Real Julian J on Instagram. The real one. The real one. Tobias, you can find me at Techzilla. Techzilla? Um, I'm my hi. My name is Marvin. Um, you can find me on IG under Smitty Cow. Um, pretty much on all social media under Smitty Cow, Twitter, and all that, um, as well as PSN. Um, I'm the guest today, um, which I'll be talking about, kind of chiming in with my my brethren over here. Um, I'm kind of a jack of all trade kind of nerd, so like I, I'm I don't really specialize in anything, but I know a little bit about everything. <laughs> if you do specialize in something, what do you think that would be? I would think at this moment, um, we'll talk about it later, but I, I would think Evo is going to be my thing. Evo being Evolution Championship Series, which is based out of, um, right now, Las Vegas, Nevada. And it, it is the home of the largest fighting game tournament in the world. Um, and I happen to work for them. <laughs> so we'll be talking yes. about that later. Yes. Um, I'm also a wrestling nerd, like just to be thousand percent wrestling nerd. Yes, so. talking about that, current news. The other day, The Undertaker announced his retirement. After how many years now? 30? 30 plus years. 30 years. So I want to get right into that. Ooh, been in the game um, for a minute. Yeah, veteran. Oh my Super God. Nice. It's the longest. Little kid. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it was the first time I saw. The f first time watching wrestling is literally when The Undertaker had Stone Cold Steve Austin cru crucified on that cross. Yeah. The Undertaker is making an example of him. He's giving it. Which was crazy yeah. as a kid. Parents were like, turn that, turn that off. What the hell is this? Turn, turn, <laughs> turn that off. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh! Stop. My parents were definitely the same. Yeah, not mine. The same. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the thing is, at least, well, let me go back to first of all my first appearance of the Undertaker. My my first inter introduction to the Undertaker was when the Undertaker was introduced. Mm. I watched that pay per view um, as a kid. That was the the what was that Survivor Series? I want to say with the stupid gobbledygooker. Oh my gosh! Stupid. Uh, gimmick with the 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 a catch it was supposed to be some kind of gimmick match and it was like the lamest shit ever. But <laughs> <laughs> the Undertaker was on that card, his first match, and he came out and he won. And I remember as a kid being deathly afraid of this <laughs> damn Frankenstein looking thing that like came out of nowhere with Brother Love as his, as his manager at the time. But Brother Love was the guy that brought him down to the ring, and it went from there. And I've been a fan since, like ever since. One of the best gimmicks in wrestling history. Period. Explanation point. I don't care. Or at least it turned into that. But at the beginning, though, that's why I got him. <laughs> yeah, I man. He had purple gloves on. I remember that, too, back in the day. Forever, mm -hmm. too, as well. But, yeah, he went over some, some changes in his career. You know, being being uh, the Undertaker. Obviously, everyone knows him as Undertaker. Changing to the American Badass. Biker yeah. Badass. I don't know if you guys saw him at that time period or not. Marvin probably has. There are, the rest of you aren't that nerdy of, <laughs> of wrestling fans, so we know about that. Your yeah. knowledge. Yeah, Tobias, you don't watch wrestling, so what do you think about the Undertaker? Uh, <laughs> he, his finishing move is a tombstone, right? Hey, there you go. Yeah, tombstone pile yeah, driver. Two points, right? I know his brother is Kane. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that. There okay. you go. Okay. You know okay. some things. That's a Speak on it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Speak on it. I haven't watched wrestling since I was, like, in fourth grade. You had action figures before I did, just so you know. I have autographed wrestling books from McFoley Yeah, you see, and, and I'm, I don't have any of that. I don't have any of that. Mm. Yeah. So that's cool. You know yeah. something. You know a little something. He knows a little something about Undertaker. But yeah. No, yeah, so he had this documentary that came out on the WWE Network. That's not a plug. That's what we're talking about. But um, what you think of that documentary? I loved it. I loved it, man. Um, it, it does a really good job of doing two things. Um, the, one thing about The Undertaker, the thing that makes him so popular with wrestling fans that like are really in the community and follow all this stuff, is Undertaker has always been the character and the, and the wrestler that never broke character. And that was the thing about wrestling back in the day. It was like all character driven, gimmick, what well, we call it gimmicks, because we know, you know as far as smart fans go, smarts or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. he never broke character. He would always come out in, out of the ring, around the public. If you caught him in the street, he was the Undertaker damn near 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A a unless you saw him like in certain situations, but nine times out of 10, he was in the black, you know, black sunglasses, all black clothes, he wouldn't talk too much. He would just be that cool dude in the back that didn't say much. Really and when he hit the ring, he was in gimmick. He was mm -hmm. coming out looking like the dead man, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So now with the documentary coming out, it kind of pulls that away. Because now he's like, yo, my name is Mark Calloway. That's his real name. Huh. And he's like, this is my career. 
from start to finish. And it does a really good job of breaking that down and the difference of him like at the end of his career now, he's, he's like, he's older, his body's been through hell. He's broken every bone in his body mm -hmm. twice. Surgeries twice. It starts off with a surgery. It starts off with this hip surgery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is where the documentary starts at. And then it gets him b getting back into shape for some of his final matches that they talk about. Like, that's what makes him so critical to the business. And it also deep dives into how he's a, a mentor to all the new generation of, of um, wrestlers that are coming up. So it, it shows him in the Performance Center, which is like the WWE's developmental training area where they do all the matches and planning and stuff like that. And all the stuff that goes into making wrestling wrestling is where a lot of the stuff is, is, is practiced at. And he's there right. talking to the next generation of, of superstars and performers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he has a lot, he's a lot of experience. I mean, he's 55 years 55 old. I just looked at retired at 55. Yeah. Being that old to be in the ring still, it's man. crazy. Brittle yeah. bones, man. Oh, mm. my gosh. Yeah. Like, and it just it, it, it does a really good job on that. So, I mean, if you haven't seen it, definitely check the Again, not a plug, but, <laughs> you know, check it out. Because, like, um, even if you're not a wrestling fan, if you're just a, a fan of athletes, and their journey, like he, it really goes to that journey too, because it's not just about the wrestling. Yeah, it's a good story. But about his like yeah. his life and his kids and his family and how they yeah. how they, you know, how they live around the Undertaker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's no, pretty no, dope. Yeah. It's pretty dope. But long story short, he's wrapped up. He's like, I'm not going back to the ring. I'm he's done. Retired, <laughs> he's retired. But is he really retired? The Here's what he's gonna really do. Retired. He did just sign a 15, 15 year. year contract with WWE. Which yeah. what does that mean? That means he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so what that means to me is this. Like when wrestlers retire, and they're and I mean retirement as far as like doing matches, they generally turn into one or two different things. Either they go into developmental and they develop into future talent, or they go into like a managerial road or 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 backstage role where they do like production and stuff like we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They actually get into that kind of work, yeah. and they become what they call road agents. So they they call matches on the road, not every TV taping or whatever, but just like if they go to like Ashes in Kansas and do a damn show, right? They're the ones that help run that show and 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 coordinate the shit in the backs in the background. So that's kind of what he would his role would be if he decided to do that. My idea is he's gonna be doing what he has done. He'll be an ambassador. He'll go out and do like children network shit, you right, know, right. philanthropy type stuff. If they need an yeah. ambassador to go, they send him because he's that dude. Mm -hmm. You think it'd be and weird? It. You think it'd be weird that the Undertaker it would be now Mark doing that? <laughs> like, not if you go to cons. No, not if you know. Not, you know what I'm saying? If you go to conventions. Oh, wow. If you that dude, like if you're a wrestling fan like that, whatever. Like I go talk to Mick Foley. I ain't, I ain't going to see Cactus Jack. <laughs> you, know what I'm you know what I'm saying? I, I go to Steve Austin. His name is Steve Austin, but I don't expect him to know slap some beer in my face and <laughs> cuss me the fuck out and yeah, all kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. The only one that does that is MJF. Yeah, I, I don't know if people watch that. If that exactly. Or not. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I do. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do. Flip flopping oh. off little kids. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that guy. That guy. Um, but some other current events or current n nerd news uh, would be Michael Keaton uh, possibly coming back as Batman. Yes. I don't know if that's confirmed yes. yet or not, yes. if you've heard. Definitely. Uh, Blake, you want to talk about that right now? My thought is for the new Batman that's coming out, I was hoping they would have Michael Keaton in that play. And old Batman, like Batman Beyond style, you know what I'm saying? That's what but I We'll see what happens with this. Flashpoint, he's going to be in the Flashpoint. Uh, Flashpoint Paradox, as mm -hmm. far as the anime, is legit. If you have not watched Flashpoint Paradox, watch that. It is legit. It is. It goes in the story. Only one person has ever made Batman cry, so Damn. it was it was the Flash. You have to find out why. Though. You have to watch it to find out why. Ooh, wow. Yes, he mm -hmm. did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm, I'm I'm definitely excited to see what they're going to do with this. If Michael Keaton's going to be a part of other other DC yes. movies going forward. Um, have they got any details on it? Or I don't really know. Have you guys heard anything else? Well, he's playing Batman in what upcoming movie? It's going to be the, the Flash's movie. movie right? The Flash. Yeah. So the Flash's have his own separate standalone, movie. Like, right. His own standalone movie. Okay. And so Michael Keaton's playing it, Batman. Yeah, in that movie. Oh, okay. So they kind of, what they because, did is they, oh, go ahead. Well, because there'll be time travel in this movie. Yeah. I was right? going to say. So there'll be time travel with this movie. Ah. So we're going to see a an older Batman, I assume. Right. Uh, Michael Keaton's Batman. So right. it'll be like a... Like, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, they kind of laid the groundwork for that if y'all watched, um, what was that, the one where, the, uh, what was the last Paradox event they just did? Oh, Crisis? Crisis. Crisis, yeah. Yeah. Crisis you yeah. know what I'm saying? They laid the groundwork for that when they had Ezra, you know what I'm saying, that's the actor that plays Flash mm -hmm. with the other Flash. Right. He connected the... When they, yeah, yeah. When they kind of crossed over, right. they kind of yeah. laid that groundwork. And if you watch that series, like, that's what happens. Like, you have the other Batman that's actually paid by uh, the voice actor that did Batman. From the animated series. Oh man, I can't uh, think of his name right uh, now. I can't call I his name. Right his now. name, yeah. 
you know what I'm saying? But the bat to me, yeah, that's that the is bat the Batgirl, right? Yeah, that <laughs> right. Is the bat but they had the voice act because he was interacting with with Batgirl, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's okay. like, and and if you look at that scene, Michael Keaton's in that scene. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. He's in the scene as a he's there's a picture of Michael Keaton in there or whatever that they kind of allude to because they talk about Earth eighty or whatever. Little Easter egg for you guys. And it's one of the, yeah, there's yeah, a whole bunch of Easter eggs. Yeah, yes, man. yes. I think yes. Like so right that, they kind of lay the groundwork in there. Um, Damn, what's my man's Kevin, name? Kevin Conroy. Kevin, Thank you, Kevin. Conroy. Damn, Conroy. Conroy. Because him and and Mark Hamill. Yeah. You know oh, okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, the, yeah, Batman yeah. and Rock. You know, yeah, right. Batman yeah. and Joker. Yeah. But they kind of tease with that. So I think that's what they're gonna play off of is that into the movie. I hope so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then kind of build from there because you're gonna have all these different flash. The Flash will go. To I'm looking forward to a stuff. DC. Um, you know, a good DC real movie. So. I'm hoping it's not a bust. Like I say, DC animation is is the top. Yes. The DC animation is a shit. So if you guys don't watch any DC animation, check it out because it's, it's it's in my opinion it's better than than the live action. But you know, it just, really is. Just one man's yeah. opinion. <laughs> uh, speaking of Michael Keaton, like to me, Michael Keaton is Batman, which people thought was weird at the time <laughs> period. Thought Michael Keaton was a comedian actor right. at that time. Yeah, yeah, they thought it was. it was weird, and then he's did his serious role. Uh, I'm Batman. Um, yeah, so I guess kind of like giving the new Batman, which is uh, Pattinson, giving him a chance. I I feel more, I can accept him more now just to give him a chance to see what he's going to do. Did you ever watch uh, Birdman? I love Birdman. I have seen that. Yeah, check Birdman oh, out. So it's, I uh, seen it. His character in Birdman, it's, I mean, it, just it's, like that. It's loosely based off of him playing Batman. Batman, Batman. yeah. That's no, awesome. that's really good. No, I'm excited to see Michael Keaton come back and re reprise his role. I, I think the dope thing with him just even stepping into that role is it's going to bring so many people back to the franchise like that. People mm -hmm. like us that like that kind of know, mm -hmm. and then other people that are just curious. So like, right. what, why is me? Why is he so special? Like. Right. Because like in reality, he's the first modern Batman. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That brought yeah. it back. And he wasn't campy like the 60s joint because if you go back to that time frame, like Adam West. it was Adam West, right, yeah. was nobody, nobody else. else. Yeah. And then fucking Tim Burton. Right. Yeah. Tim and, Burton and, 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 he, and he put the shit upside down. Yeah. <laughs> and he was raw and gritty yeah. and yeah. dropping Dark, jokers yeah. off the damn buildings right. and shit. Yeah. Like yeah. that movie's raw as hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was and he was like a really good Bruce Wayne too. So it was like, you know, you get you get the good side of both. He's a good actor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really gonna bring it back. But to me, I bought everybody's wanted to see that. Like do a Batman Beyond story arc, oh, man. and have him be you. the Batman, I want the, old Batman. the old Batman. I want bring Terry McGinn, bring Terry McGinnis in, Please. or whoever, and, and then let the shit go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but when I they announced Patterson or Pattinson, is that, is that mm -hmm. Pattinson right? Right? I thought they were gonna go Batman Beyond. I was, I was hoping. hoping. I was hoping. That, that would be perfect. Everyone wants Batman Beyond. Oh, of yes. course. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. It's the next thing. Everybody's tired of seeing how Batman started. I don't care about it. We got the origin story. His died nine times now. Please. Yeah, we know. Please. So, so his well, dog is dead too. Who cares? Well, <laughs> well, what if you even talk about Batman Beyond and what that origin story is? Because I think some people might not know what that is. Oh my God! Yeah. I mean, go ahead. I ain't gonna. Someone talk about go ahead. And talk okay. About I mean, it. I've this many years ago when the cartoon came right. out, but it's set in the future. Obviously, you know, yes. you got you got the old Bruce Wayne is mentoring basically a new Batman right. in the future, and so, and I mean, they kind of bring the Joker back. I think yeah. he's like a futuristic at type some, of. At some point, they they Joker. bring the Joker back. He has a it's it's basically a lot of like uh, gangs. So he yeah, has right. A gang of Jokers, but they're you know yeah. kind of imposters compared to right. the actual Joker, who's well, already insane. The way that universe is set up is like this is pretty much a universe where Batman is pretty much one. Like mm -hmm. all the villains that he's fought are pretty much dead, mm -hmm. in jail, or both. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. And I say both because literally like the Joker is dead mm -hmm. in that story mm -hmm. and when it starts. But he comes back later. Yeah. Um, and then there's other and that and the other thing was like, obviously Terry McGinnis. Um, that's the kid that ends up finding out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Mm -hmm. Figures it out. Um, the, but basically in the series though, like when you're watching the main series of the anime of the Batman Beyond, mm -hmm. um, it's really just him just getting that mentorship from Batman, learning how to be Batman. You see re replay on some of the classic villains and new villains that come out. Yeah. And that's what makes it dope because it really takes its own it does. its own it's mythos. A, a very different uh, origin story as far as yeah. Batman, because like you said, everyone knows the origin story of Batman. We've yeah. seen his parents die a million times already, so right. it's a different a different origin story for a new a new Batman. I just right. want to see a modernized version of that suit. Yes, 
Yeah. Boy, yeah. it's and his suit is all technology. So he's basically fucking Iron Man. Oh my god, yeah. he's, basically yes. Iron Man. he's Iron Man. Basically, you know what I'm yes. saying? With some with some dark paint, Man. but he's dope though. You know <laughs> yeah, so that black and red. Though. That black yeah. and red. Yeah. Yeah. The, the dope oh, part of that series too is when you see, um, and it's kind of towards the beginning. Yeah. It shows Batman as an older Batman in that suit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's like buff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the suit is literally what's holding his ass together. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm At that point, he's busted. Like he's like, oh, he, he takes that shit off. He's in fucking crutches and all mm-hmm. hitched over. He just, you know, living the life that he lives and all that. Like it's gonna take a toll on you. Exactly. He's a Batman for so long. So. Oh man. So who's the worst Batman ever, though? <laughs> I'm gonna have Val Kilmer. I'm gonna have to no. go with George Clooney, man. I really? Recently, yeah. I recently watched that it. Part. I literally watched it. Uh, shout out to uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He actually played a, a really good uh, uh, Mr. Freeze to me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He had but, one liners left and right. <laughs> well, <laughs> talking bad shit. Talking bad shit. Oh my god. Coolidge. <laughs> <laughs> What's he saying? What's he saying? Uh, I, we gotta send you back to the Ice Age. I forgot yeah. what he said. This is some cornball shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but as a kid, I was eating that shit up. I was yeah, like, I, 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 mean, yeah, I get bro, it, but I was Sandwich. like, boy, I had me a Mr. Freeze action figure. I was looking at like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really Schwarzenegger's freeze was actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, man. Good job, Arnold. I would say, I would say, I would say Clooney. I like Clooney as an actor, but as far as he was just too snobbish, I feel like. See, I thought he played the perfect Bruce Wayne, though. Yeah. Uh, I thought George Clooney did a really good Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. It was a little too cocky for me. You said That's, Val Kilmer. I think Val Kilmer was horrible. Which one man. was that? Forever. Which one? Was yeah. That? I don't even remember. I can't remember. <laughs> I. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Which one had you two on the soundtrack? <laughs> right. Was Clooney the bat nipple one? Yeah, yeah I was going to say the yeah, bat the nipple one. Yeah. I don't care about that. At all. I mean, I don't either. I'm just trying to put it put it together. Yeah, it was uh, no, about, uh, that they was the one with the uh, Riddler and Two-Face. So oh, Batman okay. Forever. Batman Forever. Yeah, Jim oh. Carrey in it. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Jim Carrey was dope. Yeah, Jim Carrey played a good Riddler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out. Good Look, that sure. choke slam. Look like mm. how they like didn't put yes. any of his tattoos on his arms. Yes. I <laughs> uh, forgot to start out today's episode. We do have an announcement to make of the winner of the t-shirt. Oh. Yes. Sheldon M. I can't say Sheldon your last name. I'm Maliki. so sorry. Maliki. Yes. <laughs> but Sheldon, you win a shirt. Hey. hey congrats, congrats, man. Congrats, man. Yes. yes. You win a shirt. One of the it's, an, it's an exclusive. Exclusive. That's exclusive drip right there. Yeah. Yes. Can I get uh, the next topic we're going to talk about? Uh, we started to get into a little bit, but um, video games turn into movies. Mm. Uh, what are the good ones? What are the bad ones? Let's start with the worst ones. What are the bad ones? The first Reason? one that comes to mind is Doom, but eh. Ooh. That was trash. <sighs> never saw the movie. Yeah. That was never cheap. Was that the one? Was it Rocket? Okay, I liked I the liked Rocket. The, yeah, the Rocket, yeah. I liked the first Doom. I know that they made like two They didn't make two Doom. They didn't make two. The last yeah. one was... Cheap. Oh, it was dumb. Yeah, that, <laughs> only that was time, guys. Yeah, only waste time. The first yeah. one was. I can't think of anything that comes to mind. If someone says something, I'm probably like, yeah. Resident Evil was a, generally a good one. Like, go all bad first. Go yeah. all bad first. Go all bad. All bad. 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 I would say um, Super Mario was pretty terrible. I would agree. That was yeah. pretty bad. I mean, like the 80s. We talking about the 80s one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't make no sense. It... Get me the rock! Come and get it, Lizard Breath! Oh! It made no yeah, that one sense. Was, uh, no, man. Bad. Especially yeah. for as big as Super, as Super Mario is. It right. just doesn't translate to a movie. Like yeah. it just, you know, yeah, yeah, don't, don't make doesn't. Sense. doesn't there's not enough storyline there. No. And Toad looks so weird. Yeah. They didn't have nothing to do with that. Was the whole the problem with that movie? Yeah. The, yeah. Goombas, the Goombas. Yeah. Goombas. Yeah. 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 Those looked weird. It, it had nothing to do Goombas. with yeah. the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. They explained nothing about the dinosaur Yoshi. Mm. No. He was just a pet. No. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 He wasn't even green. Here's the problem with all those kind of movies when they try to go out of the movie world and try to bring stuff to like Earth. And they try to like integrate it some kind of way, like it always falls flat. Yeah. It's yeah. like, why don't they just keep it where it's still be? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's what I watched it for. Like, I want to see the adventures over there. Yeah. I don't care about them coming over here. Yeah. I right. know what here looks like. Right. That, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep that shit over there. <laughs> so, well, except for Slime. Well, and that's the big problem. They try to like make it relatable to us. Like, we why? don't play the game to be relatable to us. We get it to escape, you know. <laughs> right. That's true. Not, that's why not make a movie true. like that. I mean, that's yeah. pretty true. Yeah, that's why not true. make the movie true. about that? I want to go explore some other shit. Yeah. Like, I, know, I can go out here and get shot. Fuck that. Can I just right. go on and like, you know what I'm saying, save a princess? Is it cool? <laughs> no, <laughs> like Final, cool. Fan- Final Fantasy, would that count? Did they? Was it live action? They did a live action, action, but they did a... Okay, Spirits Within? I was talking about Spirits Within. Garbage. Hot garbage. That was... The style is dope, but... Okay, the the animation animation was was insane. I saw that in the theater when it came out. And uh, it was was cool just because it was cool, but it wasn't that good. It didn't translate. See, I never played Final Fantasy, really, but... 
And the, the thing with Final Fantasy, there's so many different ones. Right. It depends on which, which Final Fantasy which you mm-hmm. play, which one you like, right. all that stuff. Speaking so. of Final Fantasy, how do you like the remake? I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like what they're going to go with it. Yeah. You know Hit, uh, Hitman. Hitman. Was Hitman made was into a live movie? action? Yeah. yeah, yeah it was it was live action. Action. Tomb Raider. Yeah, Tomb Raider 2. Wow, yeah. I was going to say Tomb Raider. I think Max Payne was another trash one. Oh, you're right. Mark Wahlberg, man. Well, Mark Wahlberg was dope, but the, the, the movie <laughs> to the video game did not translate. Uh, I don't know why. Right. Like, I don't Death know. Angels and shit. Like, what the hell was that? Bro? Uh, did um, any of you guys watch Need for Speed? The movie Need for Speed? Is that a movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a movie. movie. I'm thinking the, too the, fast, the, too furious. The, the kid I, from... I the guy from uh, Breaking Bad, the kid, uh, Jesse. Jesse Pinkman? Yeah, he was the... Oh, yeah, he had that one girl who, who played his like, sidekick in the movie. No, I didn't like it. I didn't see that shit. Yeah. I, I don't remember it. I remember yeah. watching it. Yeah, I remember watching <laughs> it. I don't know what happened. Forgettable. Forgettable. Yeah, uh, Silent, Silent Hill. I think Silent, Silent Hill was the mixed shit. Mixed opinion. Silent Silent Hill. I like Silent Hill. Hill. Yeah. I thought there Silent was Hill some mixed opinions. Silent Hill was okay. Story-wise, yeah. I thought it translated. I, I mean, as far as it being exactly like the video game, no. But the concept of it, right? It kind of dove, in my opinion, dove a little deeper. And even Resident Evil was okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's kind of how it was cool. Like, um, there's some, there's some good ones. We were to about to start talking about Sonic, though. Yes. Right. So, you saw it? I did see it. Yeah, it's on day one. I loved it. Yeah, I, I thought it was it. really good. It literally, it, good. it got me. It shut, surprised me. <laughs> It surprised me. I was saying it surprised me. I, 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 I didn't watch it. it. I didn't watch it. From the trailers. It just looked so terrible to me. Well, the first, yes, when it first came out, I don't know. The what story didn't thinking. change. Nah. So, no, the story, the story didn't change. Didn't change. The, the thing was, and like I was saying, like, when we were talking about where they take you out of the area, mm. Sonic didn't start that way. Like, Sonic started you where he was from. Like, exactly. green, like whatever planet he's from. Like, green. But then it shows. You saw the green. Yeah, you see all the stuff that you want to see. Yeah. You see the loops going, you see the palm trees, you see all the wild shit that's in the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which makes sense. And then it shows why he's got it. Why he's got it. Yeah, why he got there. Why he's got to bounce out. And then how he gets over here and then it goes from there. Not, you know. And I'm going to stop spoiling yeah. shit. And but, that, <laughs> but that makes sense, though. Right. If it you makes play sense the modern the Sonic games, it, 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 tra- it kind of translates right. to where the. And then more recent Sonic games. And the way they handle the character where they treat him like serious. Like, he's not just a throwaway character. And it's not like some kitty watered down version. It's like literally explains to you why. He is the way that he is, you know what I'm saying? And it shows him growing up by himself. Like why somebody that grows up by himself would be kind of crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, it's dope. Right. Like they, they, they do a good job. They treat the shit funny. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's my man's name? Uh, Jim Carrey is dope in there. Eggman. Eggman. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? It's good. I like the Sonic games a lot. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I think if you like the games, you might like the movie. And the, the movie really surprised me because it wasn't too cheesy. Nah. No. I thought it, it was had, good. It has it has cheesy moments, right. obviously. Right. But so I thought it, it, I thought it was good. I thought it was gonna be super lame, I super cheesy, it. and very boring. But it wasn't. Right. I mean, if you've seen it, anyone else seen it out there in YouTube world? Right. <laughs> I felt moving on from Sonic, like the Detective Pikachu. Even though it's Yo. technically an anime, I don't know. I didn't like it that much. I, mean, I, like I, I gave I gave credits to like how they were able to render the Pokemon as if they would look like in the real yes. world, but the story, the story, I was, was kind of like, the story yeah. though. It's like I, I thought I had seen the story before because I I want to say it was like in an episode of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is where they were like doing the whole kind of body swap. Well, they had the voice. They had Ryan Reynolds do the voice. They did, yeah, Ryan Reynolds. Right. and that's what made yeah. it dope to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean you cast Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he carried the price tag. He probably the price tag. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he carried that. Pokemon can afford it though. Shit. Oh yeah, most valuable brand in the world. Uh, yeah, that's what I say. In the whole world, he's good. Most valuable brand. He won to watch Rampage with the Rock. No, I didn't. Rampage. I already knew. Damn, I forgot about that. Rampage. Let's see. All right, what else? Double Dragon. Oh, I forgot about Double Dragon. Old school. That's old school. That shit was trash. <laughs> the movie? Yeah. The I movie? I thought it was I, I, I remember thinking it was good. I can't say that. I haven't seen it. It was garbage. It looked terrible. Like yeah. this one was. It was like yeah. the, the same clip time when like, just looked bad. Yeah. Terrible. That shit came out. I want to say it was like the Guyver. It just came out of the time frame. Guyver. Yeah. Guyver. Like that whole Guyver. series. Macho of action. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Like, yeah. yeah. I want to rip your heart out and show it to you type shit. I thought their costumes looked pretty good. Double Let's dragon. see here. Yeah, Double Dragon. Yeah, I thought Double Dragon. As a kid, as a me at nine years old, I was geeked about that. I thought dragon. their costumes yeah. looked good. That's like yeah, the, the fighting scenes were pretty, were, were pretty all right. Yeah. But, um, it was that's, cool. when, that's when that Kung <laughs> Fu <laughs> martial <laughs> arts was I was mad, though, because like that was the movie that Double Dragon was. Is what I wanted Street Fighter to be. Was that before or after Street Fighter? But it wasn't. That's a good question. Street, Street Fighter. Fighter. That that was, that's a good question. All right, Double Dragon came out in '94. Yeah, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about that Street Fighter movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how did we not even? That should have been the first one. Yeah, we talked about. Let's talk they about both came out in '94. Did they come out the same year? Wow. I gotta say, 
Look up a wow. the Street Fighter uh, anime movie because that that is true. Okay, and Bison, the one with the anime movie, wow. cold as fuck. Oh, Charlie, yeah, Charlie yeah. 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 fights. Oh, yeah. 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 My wife was kicking this yes. shit out of me. Yes. 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 yes, that's my wife. That's shit. That's shit. That's shit. That's about my lady. Yeah, boy. You know what I'm saying? I was mad that y'all got to see her. Charlie, Charlie, put the work, boy. But I understand she was working. Yeah. Add that to your list. Street Fighter the anime. Street Fighter two the anime. Two. Street Fighter two. Street Fighter two. Have not seen that. Have you seen the Alpha ones? Have you seen yes. Street Fighter Alpha? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a. What um, year was that? Uh, oh, not that. Not kind of go no, for it a little bit. When I did the, uh, the same year, uh, YouTube oh. series. You know what I'm saying? Yes. The YouTube joints. Yes. I met the dude. Oh really? My actually, um, Ro, the dude that's in there that uh -huh. plays Ryu, uh -huh. he's the dude that's in um, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that okay. plays Bruce Lee. Oh really? It's the same oh, dude. Shit. That that was a well put together YouTube series. Right. Yeah. Sure. yeah, and he came from that YouTube series. And the guy that plays um, Ken, uh -huh. like I got his autograph and shit like that. He was at Ebro. Wow. And then he was up there with the Udon table with that. all the comic book shit. Oh, Assassin's that. Creed. I forgot about that one. Assassin's Creed. Was that good? I don't remember. I didn't see. It. I didn't see. It, I didn't see it, so. it looked good. People yeah, liked it. They, they tried, I heard it was trash. They try to translate the uh, whatever the machine was. Uh, I don't remember that. Movie the either. time machine. Yeah, they tried to translate the time machine. It, it didn't work out too well. Did they make two of those movies? I think they did I think make they two. Did, I think yeah. they did. Yeah. I'm gonna say that they did. Did Michael Fassbender Michael play? Michael Fassbender. Yeah. I think them? he was only the first one. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I can't Magneto. remember the second one. He was like, I'm out. I just right. wanted to check, Brett. Right. Best Magneto. <laughs> Trying to get out of that Magneto. Yeah. Magneto was the shit though. I don't yeah. know why. That that young Magneto was yeah. the savage. Oh, he was badass. Oh, fucking savage. He should get his own solo movie. To be honest. Oh no. Well. Oh, but that'll be it for that. So what, what's the so what's going to be the best video game turned into a movie? Movie. Mortal Kombat. Oh no. No. <laughs> My nine year old, the nine year old in me would say yes. <laughs> Mortal, Yo, right? Mortal Kombat was dope. <laughs> I was like, what oh no. Hey, I will say this. I will say this. I, I, I don't know. I'm not saying Mortal Kombat. I'm getting ready to say as a kid, I love that. Shit. I saw it in the that theater, and I will say it's definitely better than the Ninja Turtle movie. <laughs> oh man. man! No, actually, I take that back. Take that. Didn't they make Ninja Turtles better? They, they made three they, Ninja Turtles. They, they made three, made three well, like original. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, sorry, Ninja, 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 Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Oh, they made like four. Well, okay. No, I'm not talking about like the newer, the newer ones. Oh, the newer ones they only made two. They made two, right? Okay, they made uh, the OG ones was like three. Three. They made the OG, OG, OG ones. Yeah. yeah. OG ones. OG three was. But there's like two like, modern. Two with the ooze. It was like Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Ooze's they made two. Turtles in Time. They Turtles in Time two. was the last it was a three, one. And, and which was trash. Yeah. <laughs> but they made they made that's the OG. That was the O three three. And then they made two new the ones. The new joints. The complete joints. garbage. Okay, I will say the first one was garbage. The second one I enjoyed. I enjoyed a little bit. Yeah, because it was more. It was more. Yeah. Because it was more wacky, like. How it should have been. You know? Rock steady, right. bebop. Yep, yep. But the fact that they were in. looking like Shrek and they were 90 feet tall, I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're going to say, I, I think Mortal Kombat, honestly, that translated from a video game to a movie. Let me so, think. I think that was a solid one. Yeah, I, that that was, was, I think it's solid. Yeah, right. I watched Kombat. it recently. It still holds up. Yeah. I feel like it still holds up. I mean, for what it is, yeah. I'll, I'll give it a pass. I'll, I'll give it a pass. I'm, but, I'm just saying, what, what, what's better than Mortal yeah, Kombat? Yeah, That's exactly what I'm trying to think of. Yeah, there is it. There's some, but I just can't think of it. Right? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to name them off real fast. You tell right. me which ones are better. Super Mario Bros. No. Double Dragon. Street Fighter. Mortal Kombat. Lara Croft. Resident Evil. Doom. Hitman. Max Payne. Need for Speed. Assassin's Creed. Rampage. Detective Pikachu. And Sonic. I don't know about that list, bro. There's got to be way more than that. I there probably is a couple more. more. I haven't. I mean, that's just a list I, right. I came, up, came with. up with. I can't think of any other. I can't, yeah. I can't think. I can't call yeah. any. If y'all got more, please let us know. Oh, let yeah. us know yeah. in the comment yeah. section. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's for the audience. Out of the list I said, though, what's number one? Yeah, I would say it's I fall down. Kombat. Kombat. I would say Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. Easy. I thought Laura Croft was decent. Uh, I'm trying to think the first Lord of Croft movie. Though. I actually, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, Raider with um, Angelina Jolie. Angelina I'm trying to think. That's the, yeah, that's the I would think that would be better than Mortal. The Mortal Kombat. Kombat? I'm sorry, because it actually had a storyline. Like Mortal Kombat. I don't know, man. It was just like Indiana Jones. Yeah, it was just. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, I mean, that's literally what it is. And then it was weird. Like she Indiana was in Jones. the. I remember because I watched. She that was movie. twirling around. Yeah, and that's kind of when I was like, you changed the channel. But Mortal Kombat. Here's the challenge I have with Mortal Kombat though, is because. Like the way that the graphics were, even at the time, like were still kind of cheesy, like compared to the video game but itself. But the story was dope. The was, story, the way they, the way the story was dope, was cool. went into detail about yeah. you know the tournament, the out, tournament, out Shao Kahn, like yeah. yeah, man, All how that. the tournament worked. I think what pissed me off is when Ke Christopher Lambert, the one that they do that played the original Raiden, mm -hmm. he dipped because Mortal Kombat Two changed up like, actors. Oh really? I that's fine. Kind of we, we could just talk about two. we could just but, talk about one, which I think's really, mm -hmm. I think one's pretty good. And it was a little bit more
Yeah, the second one was kind of... It, it was definitely better than Street Fighter, even though Street oh, Fighter still God. has one of the most iconic lines of all time from M. Bison in there, period. What's he saying? What's he saying? What's he saying? The one with him and Chun-Li when they're talking, and he was like, what'd he say? He was like, uh, the day that Bison graced your village Bison was the most important day of your life. Oh, man. <laughs> was the most important me. day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. For me, bro, I do that every day. That was a Tuesday. Shadow, Shadow Gill, Shadow Law, Shadow Law. Shadow Law. Shadow Law. Yeah. I woke up, took a shit, killed your village, and went and had lunch later. Damn. Like, <laughs> I don't know if we can cuss on here. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we, we can definitely cuss. Okay, I'm, I'm Bison is that dude. Bison, Bison was that. Yeah. And, and Raul Julia, R.I.P. to Raul Julia. Like, unfortunately, that was that was his last movie. Oh really? Oh, oh wow. wow. Period. Before he died. Man. That's sad. But like, look at his body of work, man. Like, Adam's family. I still picture Adam. him as Adam. Yeah. Adam's family dude, so Iconic dude, man. He didn't trans character didn't translate. For nah, me, he was but. in all kind of gangster movies before that, man. He was that Try dude. Him, Bison. And, and Bison, when he died man. just out of nowhere, it was it was rough, man. Because I loved him just as an actor. He's probably one of my favorite, one of my favorite actors, like yeah, right historically. So, yeah. Raul Julia is that dude. You think and his effects like, were that bad in Street Fighter, the movie? Like when he effects. was like flying in the air? I, I can't remember. So I can't remember what that <laughs> looked like. Look dumb. They fucked Blanca the whole storyline up. It, yeah. it was bad. Not only that, they fucked the storyline up. And they made a video game off of it. And that was trash too. Oh my god! The whole movie bro. was centered around Guile. Yeah. Why? Right. Well, the cartoon was about Guile too. Trash. Jean Claude. Really trash. But booty, booty, booty cheese. Oh, garbage. I don't think cheese. Street Fighter, I just think of the animated, Street Fighter, the animated movie, too. Yeah, right. And yeah. then Street Fighter Alpha, too. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. Everything else. Like the only thing just past that, that you would need is, is the YouTube series. I would say, I would highly say The YouTube, YouTube series that. was yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Super awesome. The way they treat yeah. it, they treat it with respect. And it's about Ryu and Ken. Mm -hmm. It starts with Ryu and Ken in Japan, which is what it's about. Those are the main characters. Yeah. Circle around them, and then you branch out. They had Ryu King, Goken, mm -hmm. um, and then they talk about that relationship, and then it goes to eventually Akuma. 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 Shout out to uh, Street Fighter uh, Two. There is an Akuma in the in the, yes. yeah, in the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Just chilling there. Oh yeah. yeah. Spot spot oh, the Akuma. Akuma Akuma Easter egg in there. Mm -hmm. That boy, yeah, goosebumps. Beast okay. mode. Yeah, he, and it shows all kind of good stuff. So watch that series if y'all haven't. So yeah. Mortal Kombat wins wins the title sure. by default. By default. Sure. We're gonna go into our last topic here. There's a right. reason why Marvin's here. Talk about Evo. Hey! I have no idea what Evo is besides it's a tournament <laughs> of gaming of sorts. Yes. Fighting games. Uh, Marvin. Yes. Explain ag again what Evo is to the world. Who all right. Before I do that, I'm gonna pull up one thing real quick, and I'll get into that. And I only want to pull this up till I'm. So I'm accurate. Um, basically, I'm just gonna pull up a, a list of this year's Evos games, and then I'll I'll get to it. But um, while I'm doing that, essentially, what Evo is, just to give you an idea of what it is, it's um, it, it started back in the early 2000s, um, and it's kind of the we're, we're just a moment ago we we're talking about arcade culture. It's basically the evolution of the arcade culture and where it led to. So back in the day, you know. You had to go to the arcade to play video games. I mean, this is what it was. Before console gaming and stuff was really mm -hmm. prevalent back in the day. You know what I'm saying? But it was at the same time, it was hard to meet up with other people that played. So, like, my personal example was, like, yo, I, I grew up over in Aladdin's Castle, in, you know, here in Topeka. And, a couple, like, three or four people would show up every once in a while. We'd all play Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, whatever the game was we played. But that's what we played with. It wasn't anybody else. You know what I'm saying? But what the arcade culture was doing at the time is, like, there's a place out in the West Coast that was trying to get people together and fly them in from everywhere. Because everybody's doing it in every city. You know right. what I'm saying? Global people in Japan, people here, people wherever. And they basically just organize everybody together and say, hey, come out to California. Everybody flies in. We'll sit down. We'll actually run brackets, run a tournament. We'll see who the best players in the world. So it started from that idea. People from the West Coast, people from the East Coast, people from everywhere mm -hmm. will come together and do a tournament. Just like any other tournament, like football, basketball, whatever the, you know, right. whatever it is. And that was kind of the seeding of what, what became um, Evo. And Evo is just short for evolution because it was the evolution of the culture from the arcade scene, you know, the grimy, smoke filled arcade rooms and shit. And these motherfuckers, like the people, the early FGC games, FGC stands for Fighting Game Community, by the way. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they were grimy street dudes. Mm -hmm. Grimy, grimy people. Because, you know, you could bet on games. Right. You People would throw up money on the right. games. And I it's just, just like we do in the street. Fight. You know, right. you play some basketball, throw some money on the table, bro, let, you know. We'll run, some, we'll run some horse horse or whatever, you know what I'm saying? We'll do whatever. Like, that kind of stuff is what they was doing. Hmm. So it, it grew from that into an organization that eventually became Evo, and they basically started hosting tournaments. And, of course, it started small. You know, they started, like, a little small ballroom. They rent out a hotel space all the way to where it is now, which is when I got in. I got in about 2015. 
like uh, officially, but basically they host the world's largest fighting game tournaments. Right. And now it's multiple fighting games. It started off back in the day with Street Fighter. Street Fighter was like the main game that everybody came to play. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then it branched into all these other games, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, you know what I'm saying? And then all these other peripheral games that everybody plays, you know, you got Guilty Gear and, you know, whatever other fighting game you can think of. It's been it's been there. Killer Instinct, that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. So that just a quick you know, broad overview of what Evo is. <laughs> well, that's cool. So strictly yeah. fighting games. Yes. It doesn't matter what consoles, I assume, or any of that? Particularly, no. Like, initially it started with arcade cabinets. So what they would do is they take the, the actual boards from the arcades. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They, they're called super guns. Okay. They would take that thing out of the arcade, mm. bring it with them, hook it up to, like, a, a CRT TV, oh my God. throw it on a projector, and just play. Yeah. Well, that's crazy cool. Or throw it on a screen like that and run it through something else, you know, PA mm. system, just guerrilla style. Mm. Made this stuff happen. But they would, like, instead of bringing in, like, calling in a whole arcade cabinet, they just break it down into parts and bring that in with them. Oh, wow. So it started off like basically like LAN parties. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. literally what it was. It was like arcade piece here, little trunk here, slap it together. You Make slip it there. Work. Yeah. yeah. And then they do it today. Like that still happens today. Like at the last Evo I went to last year, there's a whole little section on the side, and it's literally like, you know what I'm saying? The guts of an arcade machine <laughs> that people would roll in. Well, you know crazy. what I'm saying? Because it's portable. You can throw it in your backpack yeah. and take it with you. And you, all you gotta do is haul your TV and set it up, and you're good. So is it more like betting? Are people still like betting, or like making side bets, or do they make like actual cash? They, the... they can. So, so the way that Evo works is like there's a prize pool system. You know what I'm saying? So like you pay an entry fee. It's like it's like convention. You show up, okay. you pay the convention fee. That way you can get in. But then if you want to play in a game, you pay per game that you want to play. Mm. So like if I want to play Street Fighter, for instance, I pay like 25 bucks, mm -hmm. and then that money goes into a general prize pool okay. and then the prize pool is broken down you know what I'm saying by percentage so 70% to the winner 30% second place 20 10 okay you know what I'm saying and then, and then anybody else from there and then actually I think there's a better payout system below that even but um, but basically that's how you earn your money back either a you make your money back at best and that at, you know at worst anyway and at best you just loot out <laughs> you know right. wow. so like one year that I went for instance um, 2016 is like the first year the Street Fighter 5 came out there were 5,000 people oh my that put in 25 bucks each. In Street Fighter by itself. Yeah. And that wasn't the only game. Wow. They actually run, they ran seven different games. Yeah. And, and Street Fighter Five was just one of them. It was a major game too, though. Yeah. It was a big game. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was, was the, the first year it came out. $25 a head times 5,000. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Serious. That's how much money was in that, pu <laughs> in that pool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's letting you guys bro. know how big the gaming community actually right. is. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. And, and in the in the overarching of video game communities, the FGC technically isn't even a big chunk because there's more Dota players, there's more of those League players. Legends, yeah, there's more fire. CSGO. So CSGO yeah. players, but wow. the fighting game community itself is probably the most grimiest <laughs> in terms of like characters as far as the players go. Mm -hmm. Like there's more personalities there. Right, there's yeah. gonna be people that because of the origins of it, there's more people that speak up and yeah. that are vocal. Well, which makes it a popular community. It's the most entertaining. Yeah. yeah. And oh, that's what I was most getting to. Sure. It's like Just, the wrestling of, and that's know. why there's an intersection between wrestling and fighting game fans yeah. because of the way it's presented because they have commentators that Dino, tell stories. Yeah. Yeah. They tell you the lore. They tell you who these players <laughs> are. They give you like, yo, this dude right here is, is punk. He's sponsored by CG yeah. and he's the dude that beat so-and-so and so-and-so. He actually beat Daigo Umahara who if you yeah. go back to this Evo was like the dude that did the <laughs> yes, Daigo Perry. I always think of that. Yes. Thinking thinking of that thing. Yes. You got Xavier Woods and Kenny Omega who are big into the FGC. Yes. Community mm. for yes, sure. Yes, they are. Yeah. Who's Kenny Omega? Kenny Omega is some guy. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's some dude. Yeah, but I'm just saying like yeah. that's there's so much just a, a good example of the cross pollination between and you'll get you'll you'll appreciate this here. Um, between the cross pollination between wrestling and the FGC is a guy named Alex Jabaley. And you're like, who's Alex Jabaley? Exactly, who's that? So Alex Jabaley is the creator of a of a fighting game tournament called CEO, CEO Gaming. And he is one of the he's from Canada. And if you ever go on Twitch chats and stuff, you ever see the Jabated face where the guy's like, Oh, that's him. Yeah, that's, that's him. That's Alex Jabaley. What? Real ass dude. I know him. Me and Alex is cool. You know what I'm saying? So the thing with him is, and you'll see him. <laughs> so Guess I who he's friends with? I had to oh, look wow. him up. Oh, I had to wow. look him up. When you see his face and look him up if you haven't. Oh, but yo, gosh, he is see. good friends with wow. who else? Kenny Omega. <laughs> so when CEO was doing their thing a couple years ago, he's reaching out and trying to bring wrestlers into the thing because he tells them about the crossover. Right, because right. CEO's thing is that they always do their fights in a wrestling ring. 
when oh, they do dope. events and stuff like that. He has an that's actual cool. wrestling ring he had, and he does his finals and shit in there. So the, yeah. he brought in, at the time, New Japan Wrestling, when Kenny Omega was still working for them, he brought him over, and they actually did a wrestling event at the video game tournament. <laughs> they ran him at the same time. Mm -hmm. Background <laughs> history for y'all. Yeah, y'all caught that. That's so th crazy. Yeah, fun crossover between wrestling and that, and then and then when they split off and they made AEW, guess who was there? Alex Bailey. They brought Bailey in to help out with the video game stuff, and he ran his tournament with with AEW people too. And that's when they so, did the Fighter Fest. Yeah, right? Fighter Fest was Alex Bailey. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, Alex Bailey was a part of Fire oh, Fest along with Cody Rhodes and all those guys. Like he's a, he's a part of that. So <laughs> he's actually in there with Co with um, Tony Khan. Which, if y'all ever watch AEW, like you might know who Tony Khan is, but um, they all kind of work that stuff in together. Him, Xavier Woods, all them dudes, all of them are all cool. You know what I'm saying? He's based out of Florida. I'm actually supposed to go, hopefully, do some work for for Aleister Bailey at some point. Oh, that's crazy but, cool. But yo, like that, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's so much crossover between fandoms. It's wild. But but Evo is basically like the grand eight of all that. Like, out of all the different tournaments, like Evo is like the one that everybody goes to, like once a year. They do it at Man like the last ones at Mandalay Bay. In Las Vegas, Nevada, yeah. you know what I'm saying. We basically rented out one of the giant convention halls, which is huge. Right. It's like yeah. an airplane hangar size. You know what I'm saying. Decked out on the table and just kind of break down what I do. I basically help them set up. So I'm there from day zero to day like after the fact. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. With setups, teardowns, moving stuff around. I also help run brackets. So I make sure players turn in their reportings and stuff like that to help with data entry. Um, I make sure the tournament flows right. If stuff breaks down, I help with the, the setup team to make sure stuff gets set back up. So, you know, if you're playing your console and it locks up mid-match or whatever, I kind of help coordinate that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I basically do all the groundwork, all the logistical stuff, you know, for the first basically two and a half days of the tournament. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then the last day is at Mandalay Bay in the actual, like, um, the arena. Where like all the big fights in Vegas happen, right, right. Man, you know what I'm saying? Where like the Tyson fights are, and all that oh, shit. that's crazy. Yeah, and all that no. shit. Like we take over that whole arena and pack it out. Man. You know what I'm saying? Street Fighter players, um, Smash Brother players. You know what I'm saying? Like all these players, all these international heads. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? From all these different games, all of them are there, and we take it over for like four days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Next door to the esports arena, which is right next door, that's and crazy. a giant freaking pyramid. It's yeah. ridiculous. Oh, man. <laughs> esports, man. People don't it's, think it's, a thing. it's wild. Yeah, it's, bro. Yeah, so it's, I, I get hyped when I talk about Evo, bro. I start getting hyped, man. <laughs> so what? What would be the probably the most popular fighting game that's like that's you have to go watch when you go to Evo? I would say right now, Smash Brothers, Super Smash Brothers, oh, yes. oh, wow. easy, oh, yes. easy. It's literally oh, yes. the game that is pushing the FGC forward right now. Yeah, it's got the strongest fan base. It's got the biggest, loudest fans. It's got the youngest fan base. So you got the longevity built in because those are the kids that are going to keep pushing it to the wow. next, yeah. the next level. But after that would be Street Fighter. Even though Street Fighter's popularity right now is in the garbage because a lot of people don't like the game because of the, because of the net play. Yeah. Net play just being online gaming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you sit by, side by side, it's cool, but if you like trying to play with somebody online, it's kind of trash right now. <laughs> um, so if yeah. someone was like wanting to get involved with this yeah. and get and, you know get into it, how, how would they go about doing that? Well, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, the way that Evo set up is it's it's a combination of, one, you can, you can work for a, 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 an organization. I mean, if you work for like a gaming company or whatever you get in because you can go on with them if you're on like the fan level trying to come in there's volunteer opportunities where you can come in and say hey i want to help out or whatever just last year was the first year that evil actually paid their volunteers oh, to, to help out so people would show up and they didn't know they're going to get paid mm. they just had a judges meeting and you came in and they went over like what you're supposed to do with your brackets and before it was all volunteer oh, wow. like the little perks you got was like a couple of wristbands and maybe some free food right. you know what i'm saying this year they paid 25 dollars pool per pool that you ran. So what that means is like, if, if there's like a group of people that are running a bracket, running through tournament, they broke, Able breaks it down into, into chunks. So you have like different individual pools. So I would go over to this group and just run that bracket. Basically, I just make sure everybody reports right, make sure that I help yeah. the losers push through, make sure that bracket gets complete. Yeah, that's cool. So when you get done, you come back to me and say, hey man, here's my bracket. You give me my sheet back. I give you 25 bucks. Oh, wow. wow. Like yeah. cash. So that's the first year they did that. So people, and you could do multiple ones. Yeah, so people racked up. Yeah, that was free money. money. Like yeah. people was making two hundred dollars out of the week. Especially there was volunteering there anyway. You might as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. They was gonna do it for free. So they got yeah. so the swag they get they get a coat, an Evo, an official Evo jacket, ref coat. You get um twenty five dollars. You also get a free voucher for a buffet at the Bandalay Bay buffet, which is a dope ass buffet in <laughs> Las Vegas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bay, and yeah. what else you get? Uh well, of course, you get the Evo shit. You actually yeah. get to go see like live matches, oh, the hype yeah, matches. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. to see all the stuff live that's right. going on. 
and it's a convention hall inside of that too. So like they're they're doing stuff like that to entice people to come in and actually help out. That's cool. So, yeah. so on the convention side, how's that? Like, yeah. What What do you see? So, so on the convention side, this is more of Evo's kind of split almost into two parts. You have the tournament side, which is where all the players and stuff they want to do when they do that stuff. Mm -hmm. You have the convention side, which is basically like an anime convention or something okay. like that, or any kind of like convention like that. So, so you like, have retailers set up. Yeah, you have retailers stuff, set yeah. up. You got tables set up. You've yeah. got vendors and stuff that come up and sell artwork and gear and shirts and merch. Um, the biggest, um, one of the biggest merch areas is actually a, um, for fighting game fun fans, um, you'll know what I mean when I say stick. So stick is basically the fighting box where you have the actual arcade stick and the right. buttons. Right, right. And you can customize those those fighting game sticks and the boxes. Okay. There's the modders over there that will do it real Custom time air. while you're there. They'll oh, customize yeah. your shit. Yeah. So you can take your box over there and like yeah. if it breaks down, if you just want some fly shit in your get stuff, modded? yeah, go in there and get it modded. Yeah. And they have like anywhere from naked anime girl buttons <laughs> to <laughs> custom... Yeah. Plates under under the the plexiglass stuff or whatever yeah. to any anything you have the Evo buttons wood buttons you know what I'm saying different shapes sizes wow. all that shit custom. man on the spot custom on the spot yeah. you go and drop it off come back in a couple hours or whatever you that's got dope. it they'll wow. build one for you or you can buy one off there or whatever and do it like that and that's literally got one of the longest lines yeah because there's like professional models that fly in from all over the world that would do that for you wow that's awesome you know what I'm saying so like that and then you also have arcade games you have arcade vendors like um, who's the guys that make Guilty, Guilty Gear. Um, uh, uh, Arc, Arc, Arc Systems. Arc Systems, yeah, Arc systems, systems yeah. is yeah. there. Um, Neo Geo is there, who mm -hmm. makes like Samurai Showdown. Mm -hmm. um, all the bigger Capcoms there, of course. All the major like video game companies are there. Um, even, and even Nintendo was there. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, anyway, but mm -hmm. that's kind of what the vendor side looks like. So it's kind of split into chunks like that. Like, yeah, that side, the other side. But that way, if you get bopped out of the tournament, like if you go 0 and 2 and you're done. That your weekend's done playing right. video games. Yeah. As far as that goes, you can slide right is. over. Do something, Still have some fun. fun. For weekend. Right. If you get done with that, you can go to the salty suites, which is basically people getting together and playing games and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you can start gambling. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Now, for someone who's aspiring to be, who likes fighting games, who's mm -hmm. wanting to maybe, you know, get to the Evo, what would you recommend? Easiest way to do it, in my opinion, um, depends what you want to do. Like, you can go to EVO. Anybody can go. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about EVO from other tournaments is that it's open entry. You don't have to get an invite. There's no application. There's nothing like that. Okay. You sign up and you go. Mm -hmm. If you want to prepare for EVO, you need to go to your local tournaments. Go to local events. Look them up. There's plenty online. Smash GG, which is like the fighting game website that most people go to, has a listing of local tournaments you can sign up for or go to. And you want to practice. You don't want to just show up cold. It's like anything. Like, if you want to get ready... And even not aspiring to go win and be the champion, but if you just want to go and see where you are compared to other people, right. and you want that experience, other people that, that do nerd stuff like you do, mm -hmm. it's perfect for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like if you're going to Evo, the good thing for me is I would plan it more as a, as a Las Vegas vacation mm -hmm. that happens to have a plan and itinerary. Right. That's it's cool. the way That's I approach smart. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because plan your, plan your Vegas shit. Yeah. I want to go see Backstreet Boys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Celine Dion. I, I want to go see Celine Dion. I want Bernie to go see the Blue Man Group. You know what I'm saying? I want to go see whoever. You like plan around that stuff, and then understand where your Evo stuff lies in the middle. Because that way, if you get stuck and you're bored or whatever, cool. I did that. I'm gonna slide over here, like, and do some other stuff. The Star Trek convention goes on about the same time that Evo goes on. Oh wow! And it's, they're damn near next door to each other. That thank you. <laughs> so you can plan it around that. So that's the way I approach it. Like. Approach it for the Evo side, which is cool, but it's like, plan it as a Vegas trip. Yeah. That's cool. And then go kick it like that. That's what I did, yeah. like, the first year that I went. I want to thank Mark for coming through. That's going to wrap today's episode. I appreciate everyone watching and staying tuned. Don't forget to... Smash the subscribe. S smash no, smash, the subscribe. Smash that like button. <laughs> subscribe button. Uh, Ring like that the bell video. notification. <laughs> Get the notifications. Stay up to date. Oh my gosh. Stay up to date uh, with all the things. The algorithm does not like you. Just keep that in mind. Tweet us. Okay. Join our OnlyFans. Oh my gosh. <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> we got a Snapchat premium now. Oh so. my let me tell you. Let show. me tell you. I sell feet pics for free. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Share this video, and you could possibly win. And other t-shirt out there followers yes right, that's thanks right. for watching marvin thank you again so much for coming through no worries no worries yeah. hey thank you guys thank you Appreciate guys you. Thank you. one quick thing if y'all interested in evo at all like just go to evo.com and there's like the registration stuff on there evo this year is free free to anybody that wants to play just saying cool. Hey, right cool, peace cool. out yeah.